this is Maria Jolina, and today at Art School of SFB, we are going to talk about composition in paintings, a little bit of history and main compositional schemes. Composition is controlled placement of people and objects on your canvas, placement that helps avoid confusion caused by random overlaps of foreground objects, background objects, and also helps control your viewer's emotion. Part 1. Making and breaking the compositional rules. A projection of a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface creates a lot of random overlaps. Artists of the past, of antiquity, try to avoid that completely. They would only draw one row of people walking on the frame like on a rope in front of you. When Hellenistic artists started creating multi-layered reliefs, they had to come up with ways to handle this overlap. Here's what they have figured out. Everything should be making sense. For example, if I move this uh, man's head forward, it will look like a bump on a horse's head. And if I move the legs of the background horse slightly to the right, they will look like they belong to the foreground horse. If I move the rider's leg forward, it will look like an elongated horse's leg. And so on. Also, they figured out that through the accents and action lines, they can control where the weaver will look first, then next, next. Weaver's eyes move from one accent to another, and gradually the story evolves, which adds a fourth dimension time to your composition. These transitions between the accents are called action lines. So these rules, like avoiding confusing overlaps and controlling emotions through accents, have been inherited uh, by the medieval European art, which eventually grew into the realism that we know. With one exception, a uh, space between the feet and the frame. Feet are not standing now on the frame directly. Since storytelling was the most important purpose of the artworks, uh, figures are grouped in the pictures uh, more like words in a sentence rather than what they would look like in real life. Like Vivian, mothers wouldn't be standing in a group waiting for the babies to be taken from them and killed. They would be probably running and hiding. And the princess wouldn't be sitting right next to the dragon and George fighting. The Renaissance artists mastered the concept of perspective and shading, which led to extremely realistic representation of figures and objects. Composition, however, stayed the same. Figures interacting like in a narrow storefront right under the surface of the painting and then the background like a backdrop with perspective and depth painted on it. Composition. In a classical painting, all figures are placed in the middle. Arms and legs are overlapped very carefully so it's clear whom they belong to. Figures are often drawn from the lower point of view, so the foreground ones have heads higher and feet lower than the background ones. This helps avoid confusion, but creates a feel that you are sitting in a theater and looking at the scene on a stage. The Italian artist Giacomo Tintoretto was the one to challenge these rules and break them. He actively experimented with depth and point of view of his paintings. In this presentation of Mary to the temple, Mary's figure is really small, but almost everyone is looking or pointing at her, which makes her immediately a center of composition. She stands much higher than the horizon line, which is our point of view. She makes a visual rhyme with a symbol of wisdom, a pyramid on the background. She is surrounded by the bright light. Mother is clearly pointing at her as a role model to her daughter. Another example of experimental composition we find in Joseph and Potiphar's wife. We are looking at them from the floor. Figures are located on the background of the ceiling. Feet are cut in ankles, which is also against the rules. Another great rebel against the rule of classical composition was Edgar Degas, who lived about 300 years later. He was one of the first classical painters who got access to photography, started taking pictures, and realized very soon that life is much more random than art depicting it. And let's look at this picture of dad and his two daughters. You can see such strange overlaps like umbrella growing out of the girl's head or a girl joined with a dog or carriage stuck to the man's beard. They all are looking away from the center. Why doesn't composition fall apart? It's held together by the rhythm of vertical black poles and a strong diagonal line that connects the corners. Or in this painting of a dance class, a man and a girl have joined head but no feet, 
Uh, and the girls that float above the sitting woman also have confusing positions of legs and arms. How would you place the figures to avoid confusion? Well, a classical painter would move the left girls lower and turn the people on the right to the center, giving them more room. Degaha soon be joined by other artists like Toulouse Lautrec or Marie Cassatt. And the revolution that he started has changed uh, the way we know paintings forever. Uh, now let's talk about the compositional schemes, how to convey a particular emotion through the placement of your figures. Let's start from the stability and quiet observation. That would be a portrait composition, figure or object placed vertically close to the center, and weaver's eyes move vertically up and down, exploring that object. Like in this portrait of an artist by Miro or this portrait of a tree by Shishkin. In such composition, corners are often supported by the two centered triangles pointing up and down, triangles made of action lines. There also can be a horizontal composition with three characters or group of characters, which looks like a triptych, three vertical portraits side by side. Such compositions are used when you want to present, describe rather than tell a story. What if I want to paint dramatic action? Well, diagonal action lines will help me with that. In our world, when something's falling or hitting, it's most likely a diagonal vector. Even horizontal lines put in perspective will add drama to your work, like here they're basically puncturing the screaming figure on Moong's painting. And even accents placed on diagonal action lines will create the dramatic effect. Artists of Baroque use that a lot. The circle is the figure traditionally associated with unity, protection, happiness, joy. You want your viewers to feel that? Use circular action lines. And the last thing that is left is the horizontal landscape composition that illustrates movement from one side of your painting to another, like normally things move on the surface of Earth. It is a good idea to leave more room in front of the moving object. Let's compare the two portraits of Russian Tsars by Valentin Serov. Peter I was a visionary, his lies could barely catch up with him, way, way below his level, looking up at him in adoration. His daughter Elizabeth was a nice and caring person, always surrounded by favorites, Looks like she's inviting you to join your cavalcade. We feel all this solely because of composition. And the last very important compositional tool is position in the frame. These are the sketches for painting of a fallen demon by Rubel. Artists using dramatic zigzags to make us feel how broken his character is. But in the final painting, he is sitting still in a stunning background. And just the compositional frame doesn't let him stretch his arms and basically stand up, which works like a cage for him. See here, I extended his frame and now he looks like he's chilling. Most of the drama is gone. I'm inviting you today to reverse engineer your favorite masterpieces, trying to understand why artist has selected a particular composition for them. Start with a small rectangle in the same proportions as the original and try to position the main silhouettes uh, proportionally in it. After that, uh, simplifying the colors, make several colorful shapes there and uh, try to analyze the action lines that your eyes are actually making while looking at it. These compositional sketches are called thumbnails and that's exactly how you start working on any creative project you have in mind. Good luck!